Thanks very much for coming to the talk today. Um, it's a good presentation, and if I wasn't paying uh, full attention, you know, if I came to any of your talks, then I think I'll be uh, I've travelled overseas to be here today. Um, I'm from Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had surgery last week. <laughs> so, obviously, I'm here to uh, hopefully encourage you all to use your tech powers or any other powers you may possess uh, for social good. Now, you might wonder why have I come to this point? How did I decide that I want to actually do some social good? Well, the problem is, I actually was doing, uh, I was on the evil side, I was doing social bad. I'm a marketing consultant for the state government of Tasmania. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but I'm also a, um, I've been a web developer, and I guess now you call me an app designer. And I was working on a project that basically uh, gave out uh, scout drink specials to people in a particular local area. So I was doing a good project on uh, those lines. So basically giving people access to cheap booze. Now, obviously there's nothing that was really wrong in that, but ultimately if you think about it from a broader scale, it did scale, which it didn't, by the way, which is why it didn't got into me. But uh, really, it was sort of becoming a little bit of a part of the problem. And I kept on thinking about what would lie on my headstone if it actually became successful. And it would be, here lies Richard Tubb, you know, uh, able to uh, you know, successfully have got a lot more people drunk than uh, the average person. I didn't really want to actually be a part of that whole problem. And so I thought, you know, what can I do to actually do something that's actually socially good? And fortunately, I read a story about a person called uh, Lake Wykoski, from Jerry Argentina. Basically, he started a company called Tom Shoes. So he went to Argentina one day and saw that had these really funky good sandals. Uh, he got a really good seller in the States, um, and ultimately was able to, um, to, to make these, uh, these sandals. And what he did was, unlike a conventional business, which obviously is just off, off the loan, he decided that for every pair of sandals that he would sell, he would actually give a pair of shoes to an impoverished child. Um, in, and this time it was actually over in Argentina, but then it sort of spread, spread elsewhere. The reason being is that for us, obviously, we take shoes for granted, um, and it's probably we think it's not much of a big thing having shoes, but if you're in an area that's obviously the train is horrible, you've got long distances to walk, if a child doesn't have shoes, they can't actually go to school because they can't actually travel the distance to go to school. And so it's sort of that important. So he decided that he can actually do you know, some social good uh, by Ultimately, creating a shoe company to deliver shoes to people. So that's sort of where I got my inspiration from. So I thought, well, so thanks for the review. Um, I just wanted to think of what powers that I have that I actually can help someone, or and also society as a whole. Now, so I thought, well, I'm really interested in apps and app development. And even though I don't necessarily have the hardcore uh, coding skills, that probably I could still design an app and potentially get someone else to, to build it for me. So that's what I decided to do. So ultimately I decided to come to the good side and actually produce something for, for social good. Now my idea was, uh, or is, and it's currently in development, should be going to be launching in quarter two, is uh, called Lock Screen Angel. And basically the whole idea behind Lock Screen Angel is that if something were to happen to me at this very moment or out in the street, uh, and someone to have a look at my phone, because it's locked, it should be locked, everyone's got to lock these days, um, people can actually access my contact details if I had any case of emergency number in there. You may have heard of ICE numbers, but uh, the problem with those is that once the phone is locked, if you have an emergency contact in your phone, no one can actually access it. It sort of becomes pointless. And the problems that people face is that, especially emergency personnel, is that when they're actually dealing uh, with someone who's incapacitated, it can take a long time to get to contact their family. So because they may have even have access to their phone, but they don't know how to stream your contacts and some notes. So the idea would print on my lock screen angel is to actually have that emergency contact information on the lock screen of your home, of my lock screen of your phone. And also it can have uh, additional medical information and allergy information as well. So of course, if you happen to uh, be in an accident, be incapacitated for whatever, whatever reason, at least your family can be notified right away. Now that can be very important from the point of view that they can also give additional medical information or any medical history if, if required. Um, but probably from a more serious note, um, I had, while I was actually developing lock screen, 
I had a friend and their brother was involved in a pretty horrific motorbike accident. Now, he was conscious after the accident and for probably about a period of, say, you know, 20 minutes to an hour. Now, after that period, he was collapsed into unconsciousness and ultimately, you know, I think that's led to his injuries, but ultimately, he also wasn't conscious after that. Now, the police took two hours to contact the family. Now, which they were really ter obviously terribly upset, but the fact of the matter is, this had no idea who call. Now, even if they had his phone on there, they didn't necessarily know who to call him phone. If they had locked screen angel, uh, they could have contacted a, a family member within minutes of the accident. And for that family, anyway, that would have been the only time they'd actually been able to contact their loved ones, speak to them ever again. Um, and that's not something you want to think about. But ultimately, if you do have a screen angel on your phone, the idea is it gives you peace of mind. It's a free app, basically. Okay. It gives you peace of mind because you know that anything would happen to you, your family can be immediately contacted. It also gives peace of mind to the, uh, your family because obviously they know that if something were to happen to you, that they could actually be contacted right away. So that was the whole idea behind trying to turn you know, my social bad with trying to push cheap drinks on the people uh, into ultimately a social group. Uh, and part of that also was to, with Oxford and Angel, was to encourage um, the uptake of organ donation as well. Uh, on the on the long screen actually as whether you wish to be an organ donor or not. And also to encourage encourage blood donation too. So there's a couple of different goals there that um, ultimately can benefit the community. So that the idea on the long screen angel is that eventually one day it's either going to uh, make one one family very happy because they've been able to contact a family member in an unfortunate circumstance or even potentially save life through um, the encouragement of organ donation. Because the problem with organ donation is it's a bit of a taboo subject, people don't want to think about it. But when you uh, let out Oxford Angel for the first time, it actually asks you directly whether you want to or not, you can always change it. But it sort of gets that conversation going you know, with your family. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So it might look initially exactly like that. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it's probably a little bit small. But um, this is actually mine, of course. So uh, my name, um, my age, and my emergency contact details there. So you know, Andrew is my wife. Um, I don't have any allergies. I don't have any medical conditions, fortunately. But if I did, I could be listed there. Um, and obviously, you can see that I'm actually not going to be more than that. So if anything would happen to me, at least my family don't have to think about, well, what were his wishes? Did he want to be an organ donor or not? And uh, obviously, they know that. So that's basically how I sort of tried to change, I guess, my way of looking uh, at projects um, and seeing you know, how you can turn something that potentially uh, you know, wasn't actually doing society any in, in good into something that, that you can actually uh, you know, make a positive difference with. Uh, I think probably one thing that's, that's really crept into my mind while I've been doing it is really thinking about if you didn't get paid for what you did, would you still do it? And a lot of people probably don't actually ask that question about themselves. And they probably don't look at that when they're picking a career. But I honestly think that it's probably something that if people ask themselves a little bit more on a bit more regular basis, <coughs> it can actually change the, you know, the different parts of it. I mean, it's really great if you've got a, a um, position where you're actually able to help the community or help someone and you've got that satisfaction or you love coding, or you love doing this, or you, know, you love designing. Um, but if you didn't get paid for it, you just still do it. And of course, a lot of people are in positions where they go, there's no way in the world that they get paid for it. So I think it's sort of just a nice thing to reflect on life, thinking, well, how do I go about this differently if I wasn't getting paid for it? And this, for example, you know, as I said, it's not a paid app. Um, and from the monetary side of things, it wasn't really, uh, I guess, the, the main focus of it. Um, and for me, that was probably different because historically, you know, uh, like a lot of people, you're trying to do things because you really want to get money. And uh, I guess it's just a hard, it's hard to change your mindset. But once you have, it's sort of a nice thing because people like a white set of shops because even if it doesn't make any money, you go, I don't care because it's going to help someone somewhere. I don't know who that person's going to be. And it may not help anyone. <laughs> but the chances of helping something are high, obviously, than if I didn't do anything at all. Uh, so I guess that's sort of how I sort of see it. 
Um, you know, this was always going to be a short talk because I <laughs> thought that uh, if you had any other uh, other questions or uh, uh, if you're to get something else to read. Yeah. One aspect of this, the, the idea of keeping information, of course, they had with those bracelets and files of information, yeah. etc. So this is a modern one. Then one of the issues with this is the security of this thing. Pretty much anything you yeah. put on your computer on your phone, you should yeah. assume was just published to the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you? consider doing something special to protect it or the whole idea after all is that it's open is that's right. I mean the thing is I don't have my survey listed there as a good example. Um, and you don't have to put in who the emergency contacts with the uh, I mean I've, I'm actually working actively with Donut Life and Red Cross and a few others on the same as well as not just doing <laughs> um, what are you going to do what can you go for this emergency contact? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I've slipped up here actually, but it's my girlfriend's So um, ultimately, uh, yeah, that's the reason why there's nothing listed up there. Um, does anyone else have any questions about it? Oh, it's still being built, it would be there probably in about uh, eight weeks' time. So depending on how it will actually take to it. Let me just look from a technical point of view. Sure. You're building an app that's going to create you a, a custom wallpaper with those details gaps in here. But, I mean, I'll like say the question. Yeah. So I, can, I get the thing of name and age yes. and things. Blood type, but they're just going to retest you. They're not going to go off your phone, are they? No, they're not. That's actually there to potentially satisfy a, uh, another organisation. Ah, oh, okay. okay. But you're right. That's yeah. actually, that's sort of, it's really yeah. information. It's more of a talking point. The same reason said organisation actually gives you a, a key ring with your yeah. blood type on it, which also is important. Yeah, well, it's like my bad. Yeah, I'm an ex employee yeah, yeah. from yeah. it, so yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't yeah. It's just, um, yeah. it's more of a talking point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think you're walking down and walking down the prompts are yeah. a great yeah. idea, because again, they're still going to go back and check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. the prompt you to think about. That's right. And the family gets the final say anyway. Yeah. So, but it's just that conversation. Is there an Android version? There will be, yes. Um, my understanding around public donation is that even if you sign up for it and put it on the back of your car, yes. you can actually be overruled by your next of kin at the time of that, which I think is ridiculous personally. Yep. You said you're working with a donation organisation. Yes. Is there a move afoot to try to change that no. piece of legislation? Is there a way that this could be mobilised to petition or anything like that? I mean, what? No, I mean, <laughs> I, I know exactly where you're coming from, and when I. Um, what else? Which I don't know how to hear, but I've got some mock ups that are obviously got the app and put it there. Um, my idea was to put organ donation on one fold. Well, that'd be good, that'd be good. I'll help, I would help increase organ donation everywhere. <laughs> because, keeping in mind, it'll be on your lock string, so you're going to see it. Even when you include opt out every other one. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and another thing too, there's lots of. Uh, data surrounding the science behind choices of yes and no and so it's an actual fact that uh, New South Wales have changed the way that they have more organisation on their license application forms. And people have to you know say no if they don't want to be you know, but what happens is if you leave it in front of it's just nothing for but what's happened is people apparently if people are given the choice say yes or no on the spot or say no. So they feel pressured until they say no. Um, so there's a lot of science behind you know, exactly the placement of questions and things like that. And also really, um, what, at least here in Australia, Donate Life, which is the organisation behind um, organ tissue donation, um, they don't really want you to make an informed choice. They don't want you to do it on a meeting basis. The reason being is they want you to find out more information about it first before you Yes. Um, so, and that's another thing that we don't want to directly do in that one, so that uh, people you know, can actually have that information before they necessarily get it. So, I'm just wondering what it actually took to put that app uh, together. Because it sounds like there's at least two different sorts of things that you needed to do. One was 
talked to third parties about requirements, and the other was actually you know, the technical stuff that need, that's needed for putting putting the app together. And then maybe a third, because I can see a red box loaded up there. So is that like oh, yes, spot yes. issues as well as uh, third yes. party requirements? Uh, yes. So I mean, what proportion of time was spent on either? I, I have a feeling you spent much more time actually talking to other people rather than actually doing the text stuff. I don't do the text stuff. Um, uh, this has been developed by some very talented guys in Adelaide to make a very, very, very popular app um, to make to use around. Um, so they're the ones that are actually building and designing the app. So I mean, I've done this stuff, but I don't have a design background. Uh, so that was, without giving everything away, obviously this was for that function. <laughs> but this, they're building it to actually work. And so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I can come up with the concepts and, and you know, the concept data and things like that, uh, but I don't have the skills to actually do the technical side of things. Uh, so, so, in terms of the amount of time to take, taking, you know, talking to various parties and stuff, yep. how did you actually figure out who to talk to at the start? Well, it's, it's still an ongoing process. Um, now, this is a global app, um, and I've been working on this for 12 months, um, and it's just um, as I said, it's sort of reached the point where it's actively in development. Uh, and I'm still in negotiations with various people at the moment. So, another thing too is that um, with things like sponsorship, um, that would probably be different for a country. So, um, it's highly likely, for example, this would be launched in New Zealand before it launches here in Australia. It's um, a small market. Um, the sponsorship, obviously, is a lot easier for the small market. Um, so, yeah, it's sort of, it's, it is difficult. Um, and obviously, there's various, for every country, there's um, different organisations that do with all the tissue donation. Um, so, there's a lot of negotiations that can go on. In so, terms of the percentage, I don't know. I don't know. On the organ donation, sorry, Mike, what are you doing? Yeah. On the organ donation thing, if you register with Medicare, um, that's probably got more weight than putting it on your license because they actually do ask you to discuss it with your family first. Right, yeah. In fact, they say they won't even accept the registration right. unless you've discussed it with your family. So, ticking a license is one thing. Yeah. This gives a little more strength Absolutely, to it. Yeah. And um, so maybe that's worth doing. And that's just, just go to the Medicare website and put Absolutely. the Well, ultimately, what the um, part of the plan without giving away the secret sauce um, is we're actually going to be looking at the direct. Um, organ donation registration with the app mm. through Medicare. But that's all dependent on Medicare technology yeah. and whether they want to do that. <laughs> and you know, so they couldn't be paid. But that ultimately what this probably was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but the, the thing is, even if, because the family get the final say, even if you've ticked, you've ticked on your license, you've said yes to Medicare, um, and if something happens, obviously, then it's still your license. Yeah, so, um, I'll just make a comment on the organ donor thing. Um, like last year, Facebook in the US launched a field to say whether they're an organ donor. Yes. It boosted rates hugely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I think that was coming out in Australia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that. Um, I've, I know that social media uh, is very important to organ tissue. Uh, is the hospital going to check Facebook? Uh, and that's another important thing to it. Yeah. Because the part of the reason is that it's really a conversation needs to happen between the family and the actual. Mm -hmm. But my actual question is, are you worried that um, iPhone and Android will get the capability of the to have? Oh, to be honest, I think that's fantastic. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, it's the whole world. If they want to do that, it's great. But um, I don't honestly think that they will initially. Um, especially Apple. Apple don't tend to like lots, adding lots of features. Um, so, no, I don't. So just, I've got the latest version of Android. It's going to like a one-line field where you can put usable text in. Yeah, you could do that, but you couldn't put that much information on the yeah. iPhone. You, know, yeah. you could have a name. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? That's it. Yeah.